Hey guys, it's me Livius. Uh, welcome to my amateur, amateur channel again. And today I'm back with another video of this bad boy, one of my favorite Ericsson phones of all time. <coughs> I hope that the battery on this one still works because it is very old. And unfortunately, it's not in such a good shape as you can see. It is missing a button over here. But basically, this was my favorite uh, Ericsson phone from all times. So let's try to power this on. It is made in Sweden, like all Ericsson phones. So let's see if the battery still has some juice on it. Hmm. Let's see if it still powers on. Oh, there it is. So this is the welcome logo of, of Ericsson for for you guys that don't know this phone, or maybe Ericsson phones. I always loved the, on Ericsson uh, this color that they, they only use this color but I really loved it back then because I think uh, a lot of people were sick uh, of uh, Nokia's green, uh, <laughs> green backlight. Uh, unfortunately this is going to be a short video because um, this phone has uh, a menu problem. I will, I will show it to you, I will show it to you in, a, in a second. Uh, here it was the infrared port with, which was very cleverly hidden into the design of the phone. Uh, I didn't like about this phone that it had an external antenna but other than that there, is, there was no problem. I remember this phone was extremely expensive at the time they uh, launched it. And uh, it was my favorite Ericsson of all time. I really looked for this model a lot of time before uh, finally finding it and uh, adding it to my collection. I always liked that it had the same color as Nokia 6310i. Um, this uh, gray, it was it was very nice. I I always thought uh, at that time that uh, uh, this was Ericsson's reply to Nokia 6310i because um, the phone was uh, evenly matched with uh, 6310i uh, as you can see they are both the same thickness they are both the same uh, the same height so uh, what i liked about uh, <coughs> ericsson phones was that the battery if you had the slim version uh, the battery would have entered the phone perfectly and uh, let it uh, with no battery mark, I mean the battery was not like this. Anyway, so let's quickly go through the menu. I have the phone book menu over here. Unfortunately this button doesn't work anymore. Uh, this button was up and down, you could use it to go like this up and down in the menu. This was, uh, uh, this is what uh, this button did and also uh, you could uh, set the volume up and down in calls. <clears throat> as you can see Ericsson also included um, help menu but as you can see it was more advanced uh, from Nokia because every single menu was explained uh, what I didn't like about uh, Ericsson phones was that in the past their, soft, uh, their software was uh, slow very slow and uh, it, had to, it had lag in the menu um, as you can see, the menu differs a lot from Nokia phones. This one, uh, this one uh, has the menu faster because uh, it was basically a newer phone, uh, a lot more newer than the other ones, and it was also their high-end uh, device, their flagship device for that time. And I think they listened to their customers and updated the software so it could it could be faster. Uh, <coughs> This is the settings menu where we have our sounds and alerts. Basically something like uh, Nokia where you have uh, the profiles options and things like this. It also had a minute uh, minute rem reminder which uh, gave you a short beep uh, in the headset when you were talking uh, after every one minute that passed. But uh, it was uh, it was a useful uh, option option I have to admit, but I didn't use it because uh, I usually talked a lot on the phones uh, a minimum of 30 minutes every day and uh, 
it was always um, not a pleasure for that uh, for the phone to always beep me <laughs> in in my ear so <laughs> you can also change the the font of the of the menus as you can see now it is much smaller so this is something that uh, you could also set the contrast it had a lot of options that um, um, Nokia didn't have on their phones so uh, I think and I'm sure that Ericsson was their direct competitor back then because all the other phones basically didn't matter to Nokia <clears throat> I'm going to show you I think in the next menu extra uh, after we pass this menu the phone will uh, the phone will uh, uh, will freeze and I have to restart it this is the only problem that uh, this that my phone has this phone has because uh, it has a software problem and as you can imagine today nobody's going to fix it anymore so when I enter WAP services this happens the phone basically dies like this so there is nothing I can do except uh, removing the battery like this so yeah to be honest with you guys I'm very happy that I have it even in this condition because it's a very rare model and it is also expensive and if it is in a uh, better condition than mine then um, the, the price is even bigger so as always thank you very much for watching uh, if, you, if you didn't subscribe to my amateur channel you can do it uh, I, I hope I can post more videos in, uh, in the future and uh, please uh, hit the thumbs up and share the video with your friends or other nostalgic people like us and this is for today I'm going to I'm going to play my my Nintendo 3DS now so see you guys in the next one bye